So, but I'm coming. I want you to write it down in your jota. The agony of the self called is the greatest challenge of the body of Christ now. The agony, the agony, the problem, the challenge of the self called. So the first question you ask, because if we don't settle this question, are you getting the, the remind me your name, my brother? Huh? Huh? Stan. No, no there, there is an English name you told me. Huh? Okay, magnificent. Okay, maybe I've forgotten the English name you told me. We need to settle the facts. First thing we need to settle in this meeting, because no matter what I teach you, if you are not called, it's not useful to you. Now, now I want to make a quick demarcation, a quick point now. Every believer has something to offer as a result of the life of God in him. And the more you grow as, the, as a believer, the more you have to offer. That did not call you into ministry. That is not a call. You see, that's the problem. There is a way a believer will pursue God fast, pray, follow what his overseer is teaching. The person can deliver more as a result of the life of God that is in you. You can even heal the sick. Are you seeing it now? The power of God can flow through you. That is not calling. Are you seeing the problem now? So there are several people that can do what their pastor did or do some one or two things and they assume, wrongly assume that that means that they are called. God called you before you ever did anything. I, I'm going to, I don't know. Okay, let me prove it to you. Jeremiah, you know it. But let me read scripture to help you. I have a few scriptures to read, maybe five of them in the next one hour, 15 minutes. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. If what I'm saying becomes too hard, just tell me to stop. I will not force it. I will just tell me, Apostle, stop. I will stop and go. Hmm? May you not miss your calling, miss heaven, miss your season, simply because you missed what you are supposed to hear. I want you to put your hand in your heart, pray for one minute and say, Lord, give me my word. Give me my own word. See, just one word from God in this session now can solve all your problem. Some of you have been struggling for years. It's just one thing you need to hear. Just one. I believe that this session is meant for some people specifically. You have been praying and there is, there is a light that God wants to grant you. There is something he wants to open you up to. Reduce it. Thirty more seconds. Pray, pray. Say thank you, Jesus, for you have remembered me. Jesus name. If you check the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 as all of us know the scripture said that before I formed thee in the belly that is the womb the scripture did not say when I was forming thee before you were formed so um there are pre-existing dimensions of our personality. Are you getting the point now? And your ordination and calling is one of it. It is not when you are in the womb that God just decided to now call you. It is not when you are even born that God decided to call you. When you realize the call is a different thing. Are you getting the point now? 
Now, 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 now. This is how God, this is how callings come about. Callings come about as a result of the need that has been identified in heaven. And based on that need, needs are as a result of the plans that God have. Plans are as a result of the purposes that God have. Purposes are as a result of the will of God. So if you read the book of Ephesians, the scripture will be telling you about the mystery of the will of God. It is based on the mystery of the will of God that God began to make. Do I go there? Okay. <laughs> I will come back to Jeremiah. But it's in the Bible in Ephesians. Let me just quickly read it for you and come back. I just hope I will be able to quickly read it. Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Let me drop this point. Church members will be as deep as their pastor. They will be as grounded as their pastor. They will be as spiritual as their pastor. Your members can't grow bigger than you. The only way to do that for your members is to is to outsource it it means that they are receiving from somewhere else and they are just staying there just because they love you are you getting the point now and it's a big challenge yo. the reason why it's a challenge is because one day you you are a human being you will become jealous of their growth because you know that this growth cannot be traced to you That is why a good and sincere man of God puts himself under pressure so that you don't come to a point where what you are serving can no more help the people under you. The day you can no more help them, human beings look for value. Is it not true? They are in search of value. Anytime they cannot design value from your ministry, they will start looking for value somewhere else. And many times when they find, because of loyalty, many times they still stay. But just because they are there, they cannot just be there and decide to avoid value. So you can now see your member and he's praying. He's praying for, for four hours. Pastor did not pray. So what pastor will do? And that's what they normally did to us. There is, it is always around every time. Except a man of God that went very deep in God. So that time in the village, they told us, that is not about speaking in tongues. That is about the word of God. It's not about prayer. It's about the word. It's prayer and the word of God. Are they fighting? You see, because of that person's incompetency in one dimension of the pillar of the gospel. Huh? They are clashing prayer and the word as if they are fighting. You can never be balanced with only one of them. So, probably because he thinks he now knows more Bible than you, he will now be saying, is the Bible, is Bible, is Bible. He's, he, he doesn't have a prayer altar. Then another set of people will say, it's not about what you say or what you don't say. It's not about what you know. What is important is to pray. Anybody, as long as there is prayer and there is manifest, it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what you know, it, doesn't ma it matters what you know. It's a matter of fact. The, the result you produce from your prayer closet is dependent on the light you have. Less light, less result. When you see people with a powerful prayer life, the strength of my prayer ministry is obvious. It's obvious that there is a lot of light that God has given me. In fact, <laughs> I was first a teacher before I was... I was deep into Bible. I, you know, my father is a pastor. I started teaching Sunday school as a teenager. I started teaching elders as a teenager. I, become, I became, I joined the English class as a 12th uh, adult class. You know, those days in the village, we have children class, teenagers, adults, and all that. I joined before, around 13, 14 years. Finished my Bible how many times? 
Before I left for campus, I was ordained pastor in training. I'm already teaching Sunday school before I became 20. I thought for many years, even when I entered campus, after some time, they handed over the Sunday school for me, to me. I taught for many years. So, meanwhile, I was praying well. Oh, but after some time, I noticed that God called me specially to the prayer ministry. So, that became the front burner. But I cannot shake off the fact that I was a Bible person. You see it? Sometimes, if you have not seen me pray before and I'm teaching you, you think that was the only thing I can do. For hours and hours, we used to do 10 hours Bible study, 12 hours Bible study in the village. Anyway, that's how I started ministry, inside my uncle's parlor. People will come, we'll just be 7 or 8. We'll do 12 hours Bible study. It was anyway. Maybe if I have time, I will get there. There are some people if God called them, God they will tell God, if you truly called me, give me a venue for our meeting. If you if you don't give me venue, that means you didn't call me. You don't know what is calling. Go and find another thing and do. You don't know how ministry starts. And the reason why people do that is that they don't know, they are not yet taught. The question I want to ask you, which building did the apostles start with? Which one did Jesus have? What you need to do ministry is inside. My brother, I want to tell you, if you have something inside, people will not mind to be under the rain. I'm a living proof, I've seen it. People will not mind that the sun is beating them. They will leave well-covered building and come to and come and sit down. Who doesn't want value? Ha. Me, I've done it. There is a program I used to go every December. A man of God, one of the strongest pillars we have in Nigeria. The man, the hall, if we have the meeting, we start by 8 a.m., by 4 a.m., 5 a.m. in the morning. People have filled the door. There is no space. If you don't come two hours before the meeting, you will not have seat. You will stand up. At best, you will sit at the gallery back, back. But all of us want to be close to the action. It's good to be in, in front seat. Or don't believe anybody telling you anywhere you sit. It's not the same. <laughs> have you not noticed? Man of God wants to move in power. It's always people in front. It's true. If they are looking, they want to give example. They want to point. You are always here. I used to see it. Benny Hinn, all these big men of God. They said, people in front, join hands to God. I said, what of us at the back? <laughs> <laughs> we are at the back. Man of God, remember us. We are at the back. And because of what I suffered, and sometimes when I minister, I used to go to the back. Because, yes, it was a challenge for me. And I know that there are people like me too. Is it not true? They are wondering, all these people, all the time, only people in the phone. They are prophesying only to them, ministering only to them, imparting only them. What of us? <laughs> so we used to run. If they open the door in the morning, open it like this. Don't look back. If you look back, somebody will push you down. We keep running, keep running, keep running. Once we occupy the front seat, or at least somewhere, from first to the third, third, tenth row, if you can get there, it's good. At least the wave of the glory will be strong around you. <laughs> it's true. I will not get there. But there are dynamics of ministry. Hmm? The reach of the glory and the anointing of the Holy Spirit gets weaker as the distance. Yes. You have to know your weight in the spirit for you to stand here and speak and something will happen at the back. You have to really know your weight. It means that your spirit has covered the auditorium. If you are intelligent, <laughs> okay, we are ministers. 
That is why don't punch beyond your weight. You will just make the Holy Spirit seem as if he is not working. Are you getting the point? If you are intelligent, you can determine the dynamics of the move of God in every meeting. It is based on that that you can know what to do and what not to do. So, you, you can't just come and say, the power of God is here, join hands together. It, it will not happen. <laughs> you will just disgrace your hand. I don't want to go there. The, the thing is that you can determine, you can know. You have to train your spirit to know it. That my spirit, because the spirit gains, that is what we call valence electron in physics. You studied physics here. Yeah. That is what we call valence electron. Is it not true? In chemistry too. It means valence electron is what um, precipitates when, when, um, when the, what's it called? When the atom is in, in an excited state. Say after me, excited state. Excited. I'm not saying you are not anointed, but the anointing, the grace is not excited. Are you getting the point? And without coming into an excited state, there are several things that cannot happen. No, part of the reason you wait on God, pray and worship will take place and all that is to move, to activate the valence electron so that the atom can enter into an excited state. Once it's excited, huh, you can determine the reach. I'm talking about your spirit now. Assuming your spirit is the atom. Are you getting the point? Once it enters an excited state, what you will notice is that you will start noticing. Some people feel it. Are you getting the point? You start feeling it. But you have to determine by experience how far what you are feeling, how far it can go, and how deep and dense it is. And many times, it is not as far as people in your front here. Don't, don't struggle. What you will do as a minister is Call the people out to minister to them. You will have more results. Yes. That's wisdom. You will have more results. Just call them out. Hmm? When you see ministers, ministers, like if you're intelligent, if you see me ministering, beyond what I'm doing, you can be learning one or two dynamics. There are several dynamics to ministration. I learned two. When I see a minister, minister, I'm not just interested in the power moving. I'm also checking his dynamics. There are certain ways they normally do things. Those things are not coincidence. There is a reason why they do it that way. Okay, for example, I noticed that before Benny Hinn starts ministry, before he waves his suit, he lays hand first. Why? If you lay hand first, it will help you to determine how strong the anointing is. Because you can't just tell people, hold hands, that's when you will know. No. That's, that's mass production. Are you getting the point? Before you mass produce, you have to check with one. one. So he calls the first person, lays hand on him, and it didn't work much. We keep worshipping. Keep. Keep. Uh, is it not, how many of you have seen the man? And then, after some time, he lays hand on the person, shook and fell. said, Glory, the power of God is here. Then he now call three people. Then he now call ten people. Then he will now say everybody. You see, are you seeing what I'm saying now? That means the glory is reaching out. Reaching out. Sometimes there are glory angels that is sent to meetings. Hmm? I have seen them a few times in meetings. And when they come, they don't cover the meeting at the same moment. The more you keep teaching. That's why sometimes if you come to meetings, if you have not determined this, keep teaching and praying. You teach, pray, worship. Teach, pray, worship. After some time, you notice that the atmosphere becomes saturated. What does it mean to be saturated? It means that several angelic activity. Okay, I was in a meeting. One of the, the first time God started breaking me out, I was in a meeting. There is a ministry in Nigeria. I think we can call it by size the biggest Pentecostal church in Nigeria, if not even in Africa. So it's called Redeemed Christian Church of God. 
Um, I was there, and there was a program that was holding their teenage, their teenage um, church in that redemption camp. It's so big that it can contain up to fifteen to twenty thousand people. The teenagers, teenagers, and it has overflow. Teenagers, it doesn't even contain them. So, I was in a program, and in that program, please be seated. I'm still getting back to my teaching. I have three things to say, and then I go. If you will hold it, it will help you. So I was in that program, and in my session, there were up to 8,000 people. Are you getting the point? That's what people don't know. Have you not noticed that the anointing works more for you inside a smaller room than in a bigger hall? Some pastors don't know it and they are looking for a big hall. I'm teaching you ministry dynamics. Listen, this is not common class. This is practical class. As soon as you got that big hall, it seems as if what the, the things happening in your ministry reduced. You started struggling. The power of God reduced. You see, it means that your spirit and the angelic activity around your ministry cannot cover that place or it takes more to cover it. <laughs> uh, if you have been in ministry small, I've done practically, you will know. Probably it has happened to you and you don't know that's what was happening to you. So you will think it's demons, it's devil, God has forsaken you. No, you are not wise. What you need is wisdom. If you're with me so far, say amen. amen. Pastors, are you blessed? Amen. <laughs> so, you have to determine that. And that is why it's better to have a smaller auditorium and make an overflow. Are you seeing it now? It's better. Than to have a big auditorium and then people cannot even feel one quarter of it. It's a problem. Because even you as a pastor, when you look at people and the church is scanty, there is a frustration that enters your heart. You are a human. As soon as a pastor looks at the auditorium and people are not many, frustration enters. His anointing drops 50%. It's normal. Now, it is not supposed to... Listen, I'm not saying it is supposed to happen. Are you getting the point? You are supposed to be the same no matter the people that is there. But you are human. And God knows it. So you need to apply wisdom. What I'm telling you, I also learned from the... I was studying Kenny Hagin many years ago. He said he advised a man of God that went and built a big auditorium to at least divide it into half in his normal meetings. That normally, not just you, the pastor, if people come and look and they are not... Your members are up to 100. That's powerful. 100 membership is very big. But when you put them in a big hall, they will look small. Are you with me so far? So, very big men of God. There is one I went to. I checked. You know, I was checking. I was in Ghana and I was checking some things. The man of God has up to three auditoriums. Why? It depends on the meeting. Because your annual meetings can be very big that your auditorium cannot contain them. Are you getting the point? But your weekly meetings is also small. So he has a hall for weekly meetings. Has a hall for monthly meetings. And then has a hall for annual meetings. It's wisdom. I just hope you listen to me. This thing I'm saying just solve the pastor's problem. Don't kill yourself. Don't frustrate yourself out of ministry. God is doing mighty things in your life. It's just that you don't have wisdom enough to manage it. And you are thinking that God has forsaken. Nothing is happening. Something is happening. The day you leave your own and go to another person's own, you are eyeing somebody. That's the day you find out that, ah, that the grass is not green at the other side. The grass is greener where it is watered. What did I say? The grass is not greener on the other side. The grass is greener where it is what? Water. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. 
I will still get back to my. If you are not called, don't come into ministry. You will die. What are you doing in ministry? Go and do whatever you go and do another thing. Except you want to be fake. <laughs> the, if you are not called, I tell you, you will be fake. There is no way you can be fake. How do you plan to do ministry? There is an allotment of grace given to you anytime God calls you. And if he didn't call you, he won't give you. Have you seen weddings that is by invitation? You know, in my place, weddings are not necessarily by invitation. Recently, they started uh, trying to behave like the Westerners. I don't know how they do it in Zambia. Is it by invitation here? Ah! Wedding in my place is the day that all the people need to come. <laughs> That's why it's very costly to marry in my place. <laughs> very, very costly. The food only can... F- you, you be ready to feed the half of the village. <laughs> it's true. Even those days we, we are students. Hi, why should I say this one? Okay. Those days we were students... We used to attend uninvited weddings because of hunger. <laughs> yes, because our school, if you are in campus, they normally use a few halls in campuses for reception. Are you seeing it? So we just wear our clothes, enter. Stay in one table. If they are sharing, they share for you. That is the way to you eat and take some. So we have budgeted every Saturday or where they not we don't know the person we don't know their name we don't know anything the reason why we came for is what we call it in nigeria is item seven <laughs> item seven is where they share the food and the drink huh so we'll collect it and go let's assume it's by invitation you cannot enter that means the person that organized the wedding budget budgeted for it are you seeing the point You without invitation, there is no budget for you. That is what it is for a man that entered ministry without a calling. For every calling, there is a budget for it. So you now call yourself. There is no budget to power that calling. Because if I called you, I will send you with something. Is it not true? I did not call you. You are forcing yourself on me. There are several men of God that are forcing themselves on God. And God is saying, I don't know. You leave me alone now. Leave me. They are saying, you must call me. You... God, you must call me. Oh. If you don't call me, I will call you. <laughs> there must be a calling. I don't care. There are, there are many people like that. There must be a calling. There must be a calling. Oh God, if you don't call me, I call you. Why? It might be that they like the popular pastor. They like the way he dresses the way he speaks, the way he manifests. So, so when they see, they say, oh, my, that, I, like, I like this man. I like to be like this. That is not a calling. I like to be like apostle. It's not a calling. What did I say? I like to be like a man of God. It's not a calling. <laughs> this is a very serious matter. The agony of the self-called, Satan will frustrate you out. In fact, if you are not careful, you become a tool in the hand of Satan. Because if you are self-called, many things will not be working that should work. If they are not working, you look for alternative means. Is it not true? If you see other people that their own is working, the next thing you do is to find a way to fight them. I just have many things to tell pastor. So, I will will probably be picking some things and adding. And of course, if you are called, there are measures in calling. I've said it before. Everybody is not called to the same measure, even if it's the same office. If you are with me so far, say amen. Amen. I don't like to say this, but it might, it's true. After this meeting, many people might have to resign what they call calling. God did not call you. 
Stop. Don't kill you. You will die before your time. I'm begging you. Don't die before your time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your potential. You are good in other things. Go and do it. Support the gospel. If they give you opportunity to preach, preach. That's, see, that is not calling. That's the problem with people. If you are, that is, listen to me. If you sit under a man of God that has a calling, eh, a measure of his calling will come on you. Are you getting the point? You are not yet called. So several people assume that they are called simply because there is a manifestation of ministry from their life when they sit under a man of God with a genuine calling. Are you seeing it now? No, the man bequeathed some of his calling to you. It's not your own. Did you even hear what I said now? I'm not sure. Maybe <laughs> you don't know how serious what I said is. Anytime you step out of under that man of God, your calling will end. Whatever you think is your calling, anytime you step out, your calling will end. And there are several people like that. You are just sitting under the grace and glory of your man of God, and his calling overflowed to you. Huh? You are not the one that is called. So that is another way for you to function. In that way, all you need to do is to receive what the man gave you and just replicate. Don't put your own. As long as you don't put your own, you will be making progress. But bear it in your mind that this calling is not my own. Listen to me. As I'm saying this, let me say another thing. It's not everybody that God called to pioneer a work. In fact, there are very few pioneers. <laughs> what I'm telling you is a very serious matter. The desire for everybody to pioneer a work is mostly as a result of both selfishness and rebellion. Selfishness and rebellion. Selfishness, rebellion, competition. And, um, you know, it was, there is a man of God in Ghana called Dagiwad Mills. There is one of his books that told us about 10 kinds of sons. He said there are sons that want the honor of their father. You see it? That there are some people, all they want is the way they honor the pastor, the kind of car that you ride. Somebody was telling me that uh, somebody came and, and said that, that hey, you, everybody, you need to start a church. You need, everybody, you need to start a church so that you can start collecting tithes. Are you seeing it? It's tithes that called that guy. So he's, he's greedy. Or probably what he thinks is the tithe that the pastor is collecting. So, because of that tithe, he has to start his own ministry so that he can collect tithe. God did not call him. And the land is filled with people like that. They feel that they are not benefiting financially enough. I need to tell you, calling is not first of all for financial benefit. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. If what is motivating you for ministry is money, is finance, you are not, you don't, you don't know who called you. Jesus, we have to change our mind. Several things have gone wrong in the body of Christ. And there are no people to set example for you. And just because you are saying, how do we do it? Who can do it? That nobody is how they do it. That's not how they do it. You have learned from the wrong people. Listen to me. Huh? No matter how long, how long something wrong has lived, it is still wrong. It doesn't become right. And those kind of structures cannot host the move of God. In those days, if, if God calls you, you start crying. 
If God ever calls you, you start crying and saying you will not go. I don't want to go. Because you are thinking of everybody that God called lost everything to follow him. Is it not true? This time around, people are leaving their business. They, they tried this business. It did not work. Try this work. It did not work. They now entered ministry because ministry is looking more lucrative. There seems to be more money in ministry. That's why they entered. So you will see somebody, before you know it, he's looking. He has, he has gotten three sets, five sets of suits. He has not won one solo. He has not won one solo, but he has five suits. May God have mercy on you. I put it to you that you don't have color. Is this not hard? That's why I can't preach it in the evening. <laughs> I can't preach it in the evening. Every pastor needs to hear this kind of message once in a while. Once in a while. And this message, after this session, go and take it, keep it. After some time, consult it. It will help to adjust so that you might be correct, but after some time, you will not know whether you have started shifting. Your, it might not be shifting in your action, but your heart. You have started emphasizing on things that is not important. You listen to it again. You knock yourself into shape. Hmm? There are people, the reason why they started is because their pastor has come. Their, let me tell you something. If the reason why you started ministry is because you are not receiving as much benefit as you think, huh? that is a very wrong motive. I put it to you that God has not called you yet. Even if you have a calling, he has not separated you to your calling yet. You know, <laughs> as I'm saying in the book of Jeremiah, your calling is preordained. Are you getting the point? But there is a moment in time. It's preordained in eternity of God. Is it not true? But when you come into time, there is a season in time when you are separated unto your calling. According to Acts chapter 13, from verse 1, that is a typical example of the sending nature and capacity and pattern of an accurate apostolic center. And the scripture said that within that center, there were teachers and prophets and several other people. And when they prayed and fasted and ministered unto God, a season came. We don't know how long they did it. But the season came. And the Holy Spirit says, separate unto me what? Paul and Barnabas. So when that season comes, they have a calling. Even Paul didn't know. But when that season comes, a man is separated. The grace will be obvious. If you help me so far, say amen. amen. There are people that call themselves and there are people that pioneered work that God is not aware. After this meeting, you might need to go back to your pastor and apologize. Is this teaching hard? It's hard, I know. It's hard. God is not aware of your labors. You are just forcing God to do something. Forcing him. Forcing him. Forcing him. Let me even put it to you. Even if you succeed in it, God is still not aware. It's even better you did not succeed. Because if you didn't succeed, you will go back. But if you succeed, you can stay in your error for long. Hmm. You see? This is the beginning of many moves that we are not aware of in the body of Christ. Because since God did not pioneer it, you will find another way to sustain it. There are not many ways to sustain the move of God or the work of God. It is simple. Prayer, Bible study, fasting, consecration, soul winning. There are not many. Any other means that you devised is not captured in the apostolic pattern. Huh? The culture of how a church is raised is not new. It is the same thing. Huh? There is no, nothing new under the sun. The problem is that you have not given yourself well enough to those things to produce the God kind of result. If you have me so far, say amen. amen.
my father was a general overseer of a ministry. Just like me too, he had an encounter with Jesus. And for many years, he ran away from his calling. People that are truly called, you will run. <laughs> if you are too in a hurry to start ministry, to do things, probably you don't know what you don't know what you are called to do. If you are really called, the genuine way, the labor will overwhelm you. Certain people, all they want is to shine. You know, they want the shining, the things. You don't know what is ministry. Ministry is labor. Labor. Anything you are doing in ministry that doesn't involve labor, you don't know what it means. In fact, we call it to labor over souls. To labor over the flock. is labor. Sometimes you have not eaten all kinds of things is happening to you. You will still pick up the mic and still minister. When I married my wife, Lily, she asked me, how are you managing? Before I married her, she doesn't know I'm suffering those kind of things. Because when I stand on the stage, I'll say, there is fire here! And things will happen. When I finish, I will go back to my room and say, God, that thing we, we were talking about before I went to minister, <laughs> let's come back to it. There is trouble on ground. But you can't be telling people about your trouble. Is it not true? Go and ask a genuine person. There is heavy trouble. Things that is cracking his head on how do we solve this thing. He will come and prophesy to us and say, God will bless you. God will open the door for you. God will give you all your need. Sometimes if it was in my father's day, our school fees has not been paid. But he's telling you your school fees will be paid. And your own will be paid. His children's own is not yet paid. He said, God will give you car. God give you car. He's trekking. And he will not manipulate you. He will not manipulate you. That's the travail. The travail of a, of a man of God. He will keep waiting till God's time. Not just God's time. God's way. There are some that they will even give to you. God will tell you to reject it. You say, God, but I need this thing. Now look at it. Are you not seeing my problem? Is it that you? God, look at it. Somebody will die. Oh. Look at what is happening. I need this now. This is the breakthrough we prayed for. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. They called my father. He ran away and started doing business. Hmm? 1974 was when he got born again. Under the ministry of the late Maurice Cerullo. He came for a crusade in a city. A business city. In Nigeria called Abba. After the meeting, he was my father was discipled by one of the, the fathers in Nigeria. In fact, he, he is like the father in the evangelistic ministry. His name is Omar Opai. He discipled the man. After discipling him, they were in a minister, a, a small leaders' meeting like this, and the prophetic broke out. Those days they call him Brother Omar. He said, there are three people with Connie here. Laid hands on an older person. Laid hands on another older person. My father was just, think about 17, 18 or 19. But he's not up to 20. So then he turned and laid hands on him. He said, young man, you are the one. My father fell on that power. Spoke in tongues. Rose up from that place. Some days later, he started walking in the miracle. A woman that has not given birth from morning to evening. My father, my father saw signs and wonders. He is really a gifted man. Me, I'm not sure I'm anointed and gifted. You see, my own is just prayer and Bible. That is what I know. Uh, so my own is just labor. Labor in prayer and in the world. That is my own. 
but he, he was gifted from the beginning. Went and prayed for the woman and she gave birth. Till my father died. There is no woman issue that he cannot handle. No matter how bad it is, he can handle that woman issue. Whether the baby is upside down, whether it's 13 months, whether you, you have not given birth for 15 years, that was your business. He will come and tell you, go and tell the doctor I said you will give birth. And he will enter inside. No prayer, no prayer. <laughs> no prayer. He will say, man of God, pray for me. Pray for me now. He said, what is this one I said now? Go and tell the doctor that Pastor Josiah said you will give birth. But he ran away. He ran away. He did business. He moved from Abba, moved to Sapele, from Sapele to Wari, from Wari to Bini, from Bini. That's how he was moving around. All this thing is trying to escape the court or manage it. Can I, man can I be doing? He ran or, until he came back to my city, Newe, and he did it. He was still doing many other things. He was selling building materials. Until one day in 1996, he now gave up and started. By then, he's, he's already getting older. And because of that, there are several things he could not do. You see it? Now, the reason why I mention all these things is that the people that I genuinely call, they run away. God have to grab them like this and say, you must do it. <laughs> you say, God, look at this man. Choose him now. Look at people. He said, no, you. You are the one. You are, he said, Lord, when I'm 30, when I'm 40, when I'm 50, eh, let me just finish giving birth. Let me marry first. Let me, let me finish school first. When I'm through with the university, I can start. He said, if you don't start now, I'll kill you. That's what they told people like me. I was 19 years and God told me, if you don't start ministry now, I'll kill you. If you don't, I will kill you. You are not useful. The only usefulness you have on earth is this ministry. There is nothing, there are many things I can do as a human, but I'm, I'm only doing ministry. Huh? I'm also intelligent. I went to school. I passed well. When I was younger, I could play football. That's why I like footballers. It's in our, it's in our blood to play football. I played school team in the university. I did politics small. Anything I put my hand is working. And that's the problem my father had too. So after some time, I have to caution myself so that I can't make that same mistake he made. You can be too multi-talented, multi-gifted, that you will never focus on the call on time. It's not a good thing. They, sometimes you are too intelligent for your own good. You can be too knowledgeable for, your, for the good of your calling. And that's why sometimes it seems as if God is calling less intelligent people. It's because the very intelligent, they argue with him. They argue, argue with him, argue with him too long. They say, let's leave this man, please. Let's look for somebody that will just obey us. Those people will like God to explain every detail to them. They will tell God, let's write it in a paper. Let's agree. <laughs> and God doesn't work like that. God works by faith. You can be seated. God works by faith. You know what he means by working by faith? He will give you instruction. If you obey, he will give you another one. So if you don't obey this one, there can be subsequent instruction until... That is a formal obedience. God cannot explain everything to you immediately. You can't carry it. You even forget it. So he will be unveiling it per time. Per time, per obedience. Are you getting the point now? He will show you the end though. Are you getting the point? He will show you the end. You say, wow, but the distance between where you are and the end is another, a whole ball game. You see, so, and if you ask him, show me everything between here and the end, he will not. He will just show you enough for you to make the next step. Enough for you to make the next step. 
If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. Are you blessed? Amen. So the question now is, who called you? Is he your pastor? Is he your denomination? There is a way you serve a man of God. You know what I'm saying. There is a way you serve a man of God. He will not want you to leave. He will not even want you to do another thing. In fact, he will pay you because he has seen so much potential, so much loyalty, so much. The man of God will call you. He will call you into ministry. It's not totally bad. But don't, don't overstretch that kind of calling. Because the person that has calling is the man of God. When God looks from heaven, he's not seeing you. He's seeing only that man. Are you getting the point? So there is a limit of grace that you can access. And there is a limit of oppression, function, expression. Many times you have to stay close to him. Huh? <laughs> if the man of God drops, you drop. No matter what you do. I'm telling you a fact. If he's growing, you grow. No matter what you do, because you don't have the calling, the source of the calling has dropped. You, you keep fasting and praying, nothing happens. I'm telling you what I've done. I was serving under a man, and things started dropping. Things were bad. And I, I didn't like it. As a loyal son, I started fasting, not for myself, fasting and praying for the church. 30 days, 6 hours every day. Prayer. Lord, change this church. Bring revival. Move things. After 30 days, I did another one. Did another. Keep. After like 2 years, God now told me, ah, that I should stop praying you know, that he has rejected the ministry. That, thank God I prayed. He helped to prepare me. <laughs> because prayer is not wasted. Fasting is not wasted, but that prayer I was praying was not channeled to that ministry. That it is channeled to, that I should focus on my own calling. My, I was heartbroken because I really wanted things to work. I didn't want my own ministry. <laughs> Are you blessed so far? Yeah. This is a practical class. Turn to your neighbor, tell your neighbor this is a practical class. You can take this thing now and apply it immediately and see results. Somebody said that this person is my mate in secondary school or high school. That is now in ministry. That when we are in high school, I used to be more spiritual than him. That he is now in ministry. That me, that is more spiritual than him. Are you getting the point? This is what I'm saying. When you were in high school, you, the person was, you were more spiritual than the person. Now nah, he is in ministry and God is using him mightily. So you now say, ah, ah, me too. So you now call yourself because the person that you supposedly think that you are more spiritual and more better than is already doing well in ministry. Are you seeing it? You, because you think you were more spiritual, now entered ministry. I advise you, be a good believer. As You will do more service for God being a good believer than calling yours. That thing you are calling yourself will make you to even go to hell. Listen to me. Many pastors that call themselves ended up in hellfire. You know, I have a burden. No? I have a burden for my fellow pastors. I have a burden. If God did not call you, the tendency is that you will miss it in life, in destiny, in ministry, and even miss heaven. Because we start doing several things to maintain the calling. The, you don't maintain the calling. The calling maintains itself. All you need to do is just to obey the instructions of the Holy Spirit. You are doing everything to maintain. It's for, you are doing everything. Ah! The flesh cannot do this calling. You can be seated. The flesh is too weak. John chapter 6 verse 63. The scripture said... That it is the spirit that quickens. The flesh, what? Profits nothing. John chapter 3, verse 4. The scripture said, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That, is, that which is born of the spirit 
His spirit. There are, listen to me, it is not just being born again. Being born again is not the only time that something is born of the spirit. After being born again, every other thing about your ministry, about your calling, has to also be born of the spirit. That's why we travel and groan, so that the spirit can give birth. Don't you see the way we pray? We are like a woman with child. There is also a point. A scripture said that these people, they passed through the travail. But when they gave birth, they gave birth to air. They gave birth to nothing. Because there was no incubation. Those things we are running with, God did not inseminate. He didn't, put, he didn't plant anything. You are just carrying the baby. You are suffering like other pastors. You say, the pastors in this city, we are suffering. You are not among. <laughs> you are not among the pastors. Are you getting the point? You are suffering on behalf of the pastors in this city. But when they check the spiritual rooster in heaven of the pastors that God sent to this city, your name is not on it. So you are passing through the bed pangs of of the suffering that is allocated to pastoring in Lusaka and Zambia. After suffering like others, when the time to leave them comes, God leave them you, you are in the same place. Because there was never a seed. <laughs> Anytime my teaching becomes too hard, just say, man of God, man of God, it's too hard, stop. I will stop. I will never force you. Hmm? But when, when ministry teach you a bitter lesson, <laughs> I want to prove something to this, my brother on eyeglasses, because he was the one that was looking at me when I was mentioning a few things. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1, that is not, it's not one of the scriptures I came with, but it's just to prove something. If you're with me so far, say amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hold the hands of your neighbor. Let's pray in tongues for one minute. Let's digest what we just said. Sometimes your ear will hear, but your heart has not digested. Yes. Just pray in tongues. Have this consciousness in you that you want to drive this thing in. Like somebody digesting food. Uh, so that walk with a conscious as you speak in tongues. The prayer language drives things in the spirit in the direction of your consciousness. In the, in the direction of the subsisting matter that is in your heart. Rateria pa kosa san pedia tanas. Rapatelia, give me some more sound. Rapaporia kapantelia tendes. Idati parate katia. Please put our keyboard on. Saka podiam pana. Ante skiva pantalas. Idapa bia kota manta bariante. Jagata papa briante le bokom patala patas. Rapaporia, rapapolia. Soria hatane am pete kompa jako priato mante kapena itapedia kapampala kupana zaprata papa pakambe ai katedi ai kate pati ampata mambre ko papala abra ko pante katia tamante iya papa papa kapa iya papa 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 po ambra papa papa mba iya papa pata kampa iya papa papa po men of god pray Japetanti kaparam pehata ate ponta papan kapel ya pate dia pana kampate azapate da pante katua apapa papalia apapa papalia ya papa asalia
same if touched your grace our life must change we will never be the same we've touched your grace and our life must change we will never be the same we've touched your grace and our life must change we will never be the same we've touched your grace our life must change <laughs> we will never be the same we've touched your grace our life must change as men of god we will never be the same we've touched your grace our life must change we will never be the same we've touched your grace our life must change we will never be the same we've touched your grace our life must change higher 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 If you are a woman of God, this is time to pray. There is a special grace that God is pouring upon women that are called into ministry this morning. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace. Our life must change. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace. Our life must change. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace. Our life must change. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace. Our life must change. Woman of God, pray. God is shifting you in ministry. There is a shift coming to your ministry. The proof is that there is a new grace, a new anointing. There is a new anointing, a new grace that is coming, even this morning. Woman of God, receive grace to affect your destiny. When this grace comes, you will no more be in doubt whether God called you. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace. Our life must change. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace. Our life must change. We will never be the same. 
we've touched your grace our life must change we will never be the same we've touched your grace in Jesus maintain the key just reduce it a little we will never be the same we've touched your grace our life must change Listen, listen to me. There are three ladies, three women of God that the grace of God is coming upon you now to separate you unto your calling. Every new season has a new anointing, a new grace that comes to separate you. There are, there are three of them. There are three women of God like that. They are ladies. Do I have ushers? I want to pray for those three. Three women of God. Three women of God. Let the Lord fill your vessel with grace. The people I'm talking about are women. never be the same you've touched his grace your life has changed bring it for me for me bring them for me it will be very strong 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 very strong very strong bring up for me we consecrate this place as a holy ghost zone sisters in front here you will not be the same 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 let the hand of God come upon them 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 you will never be the same you touch this grace when grace comes it's evident Uh... 
Jesus. The spirit of might. The spirit of might. There is one of these sisters here that the Lord has called to deliverance ministry. Some of you that know them we know after now. They will cast out devils. They will receive the gift of designing of spirits. They will see the demons and cast them out. They will see the demons and cast them out. Healing anointing is here. Prophetic grace is here. Angels are working on them, 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 working on them. The rest of the people you can be seated. Touched your grace, our life must change. We will never be the same. We've touched your grace, our life must change. Nobody can touch grace and remain the same. No, it's not possible. Grace can't keep you the same place. So my brother let me read that scripture for you i know you want to hear it <laughs> let's start from verse 3 of the book of ephesians chapter 1 god gave me a grace towards women that are called to minister Blessed be 
the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Then look at verse 4. That is where the matter starts. According as he has chosen us, where? I want this, my brother. I want, maybe you will read for me. Uh, look at, don't worry, let's, let me show you. You are in Ephesians, right? Chapter 1. Look at verse 4. He said, according as he has chosen us in him, the father chose us in Christ. Are you getting the point? The father chose us, but he didn't choose us individually. He chose us in Christ. So even before the foundation of the world, Christ is a corporate entity. So we are found in Christ as a corporate entity. So this activity now is not taking place when Jesus came at Nazareth. This thing now is happening before the foundations of the world. So it's not an afterthought. It is something that God has willed. That's where I'm coming now. Because it has not been put... In, now, this revelation is coming because it has been put into action. And by revelatory power... Paul was able to pipe in into this project of God. That's what he said in chapter 3 of this Ephesians. Let me show you. Sorry for the way we are moving. We have to establish some scriptures. Look at chapter 3 verse Look at let's let's start from verse 7. I'm still coming back to Ephesians said whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me whom I'm less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see so there is a particular grace that was given to Paul and the intent the purpose of this grace is to make all men what see so before men see there is need for uh, of, of for you to see in the scene that Paul is talking about is by revelation and actually he started from chapter 1 to start emphasizing it he said there are things that god has done but he needs the spirit of wisdom and revelation to enter into it there are things he proposed and there are things he has done as a result of his purpose hmm? and there are things he wants to do as a result of that purpose all can only be entered into by revelation and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which was from the beginning which was from the beginning of the world, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent, and then every other thing he said. So, uh, th these things are in God. He proposed them. Hmm? There is something that God wants to gain. And because of that thing he wants to gain and achieve, he decided to walk in a particular way. Hmm? And all these decisions... All these purpose, all this will and plan are things that came before the earth came. So it means that the earth is a consequential realm. Hmm? This earth, this physical universe is an executionary realm, is a consequential realm. There is a superior realm in the spirit. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. If you look at chapter 1 and... Um, verse 17 all of us know chapter 1 verse 17 Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17 but there is something we miss because there is a purpose for that verse 17 verse 17 said that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the father of glory might give may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation <clears throat> in the knowledge of him assuming the spirit of wisdom and revelation comes to make you to know God there is a consequence 
the eyes of your understanding being enlightened by this activity. He said, that ye might know, number one, the first thing that you will know as a result of your, your eyes is enlightened now. How did your eyes get enlightened? Because the spirit of wisdom and revelation came to work. Are you getting the point? Your eyes was enlightened. And as a result of that enlightenment, you are now able to know. First thing you will know is the hope of his calling. Not the hope of your calling. The hope of God's calling. Now, now, now. Are you seeing it now? There are several people that misinterpret this scripture. This thing has nothing to do with what you will gain. This scripture is about what God is gaining. This is what this scripture means. Exactly. The scripture is trying to say, when God called you, there is something he wanted to gain, and then he called you. Are you seeing it now? God, so, his hope. God is hoping that your calling will be profitable. That's what this scripture is saying. So, there is a hope. The hope of his calling. Are you seeing it now? When, when you... When you invest money, huh, you are hoping that you will make gain. Is it not true? That's what this scripture is saying. So every calling that God gives a man is an investment. And there is a profit that God is expecting to make from that investment. And the scripture called it the hope of calling you. So, but the scripture is trying to say, you need the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God coming to the point that your eyes the act, eyes of your understanding is enlightened so that you can know that hope. It means that several people have calling and they don't know the hope. What is the hope? The hope is, what is God expecting to benefit from my calling? Do you know you can do your calling and die and you don't know what God expected to gain from calling you? Because if you don't know what God expects, this is your calling now. What is God expecting to gain from it? If you don't know it, you will be doing many things. But the reason why God called is to gain. So if God called to gain, your emphasis should be in producing maximum gain for God. And if you will produce maximum gain for God, you have to know the hope. What is God expecting for my life? Because hope is the same. The contemporary natural word for hope is expectation. Hope is powerful. Hope is the blueprint of faith. I think I've taught it here before. If you're with me so far, say Amen. The second thing there is, what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense? Not your inheritance. <laughs> you know, me too, I made mistake in teaching this place until later, later. God now called me and said, this his is who? Is he you or me? Look at that scripture now. That his that is mentioned there, man of God, is he you or is he God? He's God. This inheritance now is not your inheritance. Now, it means that the saints are the inheritance of God. And this is not a new philosophy. It is not a new concept. When you go to the Old Testament, you will find out that the Levites, their portion is God. They don't give them land. Is it not true? So, God owns them. It means that from time immemorial, God is looking for who to own and call his own. So a day came when we became saints. We became God's own. So there is an inheritance. God, God, is, God has inheritance. And that is inheritance. is in the saints. His inheritance are saints. And it is in the saints. He has been showing it. From the old covenant. Every first child that opened the womb. God will say is my own. That means God is looking for inheritance. Even amongst his people. Are you seeing it now? So he said here that and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in this sense? I don't want to go there. I, this scripture now is complex. Probably you have read it and you thought you know what it means. This word here is tautology in English language. Somebody came and told you and you just read and passed. Using another translation doesn't help in this one. That you might know the riches of his glory, the riches of the glory of his inheritance. What does it mean? You have been, what does it actually mean? Hmm? He's saying 
the glory has riches. Hmm? That's what he say, And you need to know it. Hmm? And that abounding riches of the glory is found within the environment of the saints. There are several things God did in us that can only be manifest when we yield ourselves to those things God did. That is why when we move further in the scripture, the Bible said, Christ in you, Christ in me, what? The hope of glory. So for we to make progress in this particular one now, we need to research the word glory. What does it mean? <laughs> That's one of the hardest words to demystify in the scripture. It's very hard. It's so hard that at some point, the God, God has to come as a person to define for us what glory is. God came in the person of Jesus just to define for us what glory is because people have been running with inaccurate definition of what glory is. And the Bible said in the book of John chapter 1, he said, we beheld his glory, the glory like that of the only begotten son, of, begotten son full of grace and truth. We beheld his glory. So the personality of Jesus came as the revelation of the glory of God. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. All this thing I did is to prove <laughs> something to. So let's 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 move a little back, step backward to the book of Jeremiah. That's how we came here. Is it not true? Yes. My brother, why did you why did you you didn't say anything about your eye? You had eyeglasses, you have removed it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. but it's good I like your attention caught me okay verse 5 is what I'm going to read the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 if you are there say amen, amen. before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee okay mark this scripture now are you with me number 2 and before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto nations. So there are three activities here. Is it not true, man? Now, these three activities happen at different junctions. Are you seeing it? Before you entered your mother's womb, what happened that time? Hmm? Are you with me? If you're with me, say amen. amen. I told you that there are three things that happen now. And they happen at different intervals in the aeons of God. The first one is before you are going to answer this one. Mm. Before you entered your mother's womb, what happened that time? You are not my friend, though, so you need to, you need to be. Don't allow people to ask you. Say, I, I, I know Apostle. I, I carried him. I, he, I worked with him like this, and, and they now set and will now think that just because you work with me, you are. Not, they now throw something to you. Boo! As in, because they have seen you with me now, they have taken you serious. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> It's risky to be working with people like us because God and Satan takes us serious. And God and Satan will take anybody close to us. What? Serious. <laughs> you will not forget me, I know. <laughs> Even in your dream, if you want to stop, I will come in your dream. I will visit you. Mm. <laughs> if you are blessed so far, say amen. amen. Don't mind me. I'm just trying to, he's my brother. I'm just trying to connect with him. Amen. Even though we teach and preach, we are, we are brothers. So, if you look at this scripture, the Bible said, I knew thee before. Before I formed thee. 
So there is a foreknowledge. That, that foreknowledge is what there are several falls and pre's that you need to know. Let me give you one more scripture to help you. Romans chapter 8. Let's see one or two falls and pre's of destiny and calling. Verse 26, Romans chapter 8, let's start from there. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we of. But the Spirit itself, or himself, maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good of them, for the good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You see that same governing factor. The purpose of God is the governing factor of all of his activities. Now because of his purpose. Are you seeing it now my brother? He, look at what the scripture said. Let me read it again. To them who are called. How? According to. So it is the purpose of God that decided the people that should be called why we are called, the nature of our calling, and all these things are located in a certain place. Called according to his purpose, for whom he did for no. As soon as they said called, they shifted it from time and put it in, in the eternity past. Are you seeing it now? That's where the purpose of God is. Before Zambia, the, before there was a nation called Zambia, your calling is already hanging, Pastor Gift. God is not surprised. That's why we pray. If it is not true, we are not qualified to pray. The reason why we are praying is that we know that there are things written about us. And the reason why we are praying is that we have vowed to see it manifest. So he said, first thing, for him... For whom, for whom he did for no one, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So first thing is for no, second one is predestinate. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, he, he, them he also what? Called. Are you seeing it now? Calling predestinate. All these things are happening before. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. The whole point I'm trying to make here is that there is the person that God knew. One of the major reasons we pray and do what we do is because the one God knew is not this one here. When you pray, grow, study, give yourself to the building of the scripture, that identity, that identity that is captured in the foreknowledge of God will start manifesting. Hmm? The one that we are seeing now is, you know, you called him on the phone. And when the phone rang, I saw the name that was written on it. I asked him the meaning. He said, this is the Spanish for love. <laughs> <laughs> so my love in Spanish. Hi. <laughs> That's the one that Ian loved. There is the one that God called. Mm, there must be intersection. There is something God taught me early in life. If there is no intersection between what you desire and what God desires. Huh? My message will be hard for you. Hmm? <laughs> Let me leave you. 
Let me look for other people. My message will be hard, be very hard for you. <laughs> okay, there is a foreknowledge, and there is a predestination, and there is a preordination. Foreknowledge, predestination, and preordination. Are you getting this point? If it is pre for, it means that it happened before. It's not just that it happened before you came here. It even happened before the earth came around. Sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you just tell God, how great thou art. He's not your mate. How many of you here, you have prayed a prayer and said, God, if you don't answer me, I will backslide. I will no more be a Christian. Hmm? Your problem is that you don't know who you are talking to. You can be saying that thing in your mouth and die. His mercy is so big that even when you insult him, he will allow you to insult him. That's how big-hearted God is. That he can even allow you to insult him. He doesn't care. He don't, he's not bothered. Hmm? He's a father. A young boy of five years old woke up one day and said, Daddy, you are no more my daddy. I'm leaving the house. I'm going elsewhere. You have gotten me angry. So, they, so they, when he was leaving, the father said, okay, bye. Bye. That's what many of us have done to God. Say bye. So when he was leaving, as soon as he... Now his intention is not to leave. Oh. He just wanted to do so that his father will miss him and say, without you, I can no more live. Mm -mm. God is El Shaddai. You know what is El Shaddai? The multi-breasted one. He is the one that sustains all things and no one sustains him. Are you getting the point? Let me put it to you. When God tells you, my sister, to, when we say, love God, love God. When you love God, you are the one that benefits. God doesn't benefit anything from you loving him. I know you will not believe this thing. When you worship him, love him, serve him, you are the one benefiting. He, ha he knows the impact it will have on you. In loving and serving him. That's why he's telling you. Before you were here, how was God existing? How was he coping? That's the first question you ask yourself. Before man ever came, how was God coping? How do you now arrogantly and full of pride say that without you, God, who are you? Who are you? Humble yourself. As I wanted to say in the beginning, the call of God is precious. If God ever called you, hold it like this. It is a special, it's a privilege. It's not a right. If he called you, don't think uh, you are special. No, he can call another person. If the call of God is on you, it is an honor. Bear it as a badge. If you're with me so far, say amen. amen. Okay. If God foreknow and preordained, it means that there are several things about my calling that is not a project, a project of time. Now listen, what God preordained might not happen. You cannot, you, okay, let me say it this way. You cannot do more than God ordained for you to do, but you can do less. What did I say? You cannot do more than God ordained for you to do. But you can do less than God ordained for you to do. And there are several reasons why you can do less. Several reasons. Are you getting what I'm saying? You can't do more. No matter what you try, you can't do more than God. If at that time that we are saying this man of God, nobody has done more than him. If God throws him in the balance, many times that person has done, done up to 50%. There are few people that finished their race. Men like Paul. Do you know what he means? When Jesus said it is finished, it is not just the payment for your sin. It is the requirement of his mandate upon the face of the earth. He has finished it at 33 years. Hmm? How old are you? Don't tell me. Don't tell me. You need to weep for yourself. It's, uh, it's an object of weeping, man of God. 
that Jesus finished everything at 33. And you have added 10 years to that 33. And you are hoping that your calling will start next year. <laughs> God help us. You are hoping that your calling, an elderly man that is almost 60, came and said that he knows that by next year he is going to start his calling by next year. I looked at him. I was, I was weeping. I thought I was moved by the Holy Ghost. No, I was moved by his challenge. He's in trouble. He thought I, I, he thought I, I was moved by the Holy Ghost. What he was saying was moving him. I was weeping. I said, oh, what a wasted years. Hmm? Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, sh show me mercy. That I may not waste my years. Let's pray one more time. Say, Lord, Lord show me mercy. Show me mercy. That, I that I will not waste my years. It's important that every moment counts. It's important that every, every blow counts. Very important. If you start your calling by 40, huh? you are in trouble. And there are several of you here. God called you when you were a teenager. I know what I'm saying. There is a woman here. God called you when you were younger. Very young. And even pays you a visit. You enjoy the presence of God. Suddenly, you lost it. Bring that woman. Let me pray for her. Just because you wasted the years does, didn't change anything. The labor increased for you. What God will do for that person is to show you mercy and increase grace for you. The labor is still intact. Pray, pray with me one more time. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, I don't want to come late. I don't want to come late. I don't want... Pray it as a prayer. Pray it as a prayer. I don't want to come late. Oh. <laughs> there are several people here they are searching for you in the spirit your seat is vacant your office is unoccupied the place that God placed you nobody is there and the question that is being asked in the spirit is the question that was asked Adam the question is Adam where are thou where are thou Adam is physically there he was there physically, but in the spirit, his office is vacant. When will you occupy your office? Arise. Arise. I have a body. Pray for 30 more seconds. Honebo siya para tantes. Ira pateniam para kupara hata. Oh, yo, yo. In Jesus' name, you can be seated. May the Lord restore all the years that has been wasted in the name of Jesus. Amen. I say, may the Lord restore all the years that has been wasted in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you, you have really wasted time. You have really wasted years. You have wasted, you know. You know. You are busy doing a lot of things, running away, doing all kinds of stuff. Don't come late to the table of destiny. Don't come late to the table of destiny. At age 12, Jesus said, don't you know I should be about my father's business? 12 years old. What are you doing at age 12? Probably still following your parents around. Jesus is so sure of his calling. That he said, I'll, 
his fa physical father is calling him. He's saying, I will be about my father. Quit business now. He is so sure at age 12 that he knew that Joseph was not his father. At age 12. Let's pray one more prayer. Say, Lord, grant me clarity in my calling. It's very important. Pray it for 30 seconds. You need clarity. You need clarity. Every darkness in your path will disappear now. Your days and destiny will be illuminated by the eternal lights of God. You will know what to do. have a few more minutes I want somebody to help me and read two scriptures give me keep playing softly softly Colossians chapter 4 from verse 12 Somebody read for me. Who can read for me? Colossians chapter 4 from verse 12 to 17. Who is one of you, a bond servant of Christ? What, what translation is that? New King James. Version. I just want old King James. Okay. It's the same, but for I just want okay. old King James to help me. Make who, my... who is one of you, a servant of Christ? Okay, saluted you, mm -hmm. always laboring fervently. So underline that word, laboring fervently. Labor, labor, laboring fervently. Mm -hmm. Ministry is labor. Continue. For you are in prayers now. I used to ask some people. You used to sit in front. Now why are you at the back? You came late. Uh, I used to tell some people that don't don't worry yourself, don't worry yourself. It's not important. I used to tell some people that prayer is labor. They tell me that you know uh, it's not prayer is not hard. Why are you people praying the way the Bible said always laboring in prayer? Hmm. You will never be able to achieve great things in ministry especially if you are called to ministry until you see prayer as labels prayer is labor when you see a man i don't know how they do agriculture and farm work in in zambia but in our place several places they still do manual work they use holes when you see somebody do work probably do farm work and he farm all this place piece of land from morning till evening 
and you see another pray, person praying, you will say that the person that went to farm did more work than the person that prayed. You don't know level. If you know labor, you will find that there is no comparison. Prayer is labor. I speak as a man that God has shown mercy. Prayer is labor. Oh. I finished from one 24 hours prayer meeting one time. It seems as if my spirit, soul, and body were hanging in different dimensions. They refused to come together. I was walking on the street like, like somebody... I was lost in another world. It took me time. It took me almost 12 hours to come back to my body and be a normal person. My body, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't do anything. It was labor, labor. I led prayer for, for 16 hours. 16 hours of the 24. 16 hours. My body was charged. Like, like hydroelectric power current in the spirit at some point i led the prayer i stood like this and i knew it seemed as if i'm i'm a hot spot in the spirit i was just going like this oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. i was not normal anymore prayer is level i knew i was giving birth in the spirit ask a woman that has given birth that's the only way you can understand this prayer. And guess what? For a woman that gave birth is once in nine months. For we that groan and travail is every time we appear. Any time we appear, we labor. Because once we come, God will afflict us with the burdens of heaven. When you are pregnant in the spirit, you are not pregnant with food. You are not pregnant with a baby. You are pregnant with burdens. If you don't do something about it, it will die. Like a baby that is aborted. Several people has aborted their bodies because they, they didn't labor over it. They didn't incubate it. Oh, you incubate bodies so that they can mature to be better. That's what the scripture told us in the book of Acts chapter 2. He said, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, the Bible said that he sat on them. He, he sat. That's how, when the Holy Ghost sits on you, to you, he sits on body. And sometimes he sits for 20 hours. You lock yourself inside one room, put your phone off. I will not come out until my face shine. I will not come out. You are doing your members a disservice. You are not you are a wicked pastor if you come out every day without receiving substance from heaven. What do you want to deliver to the people? It's only men that met God that are qualified to meet other men. That's what the scripture said. When they saw the apostles in the book of Acts of the Apostles, the Bible said, this men have been with Jesus. Ah, that's what the Bible said. The scripture said, he called them that they would be with him so that he might send them. So it's only men that have parried. Only, only men that have been with him that have the capacity to be sent. And he said that he might. It's not that he must. He might. So if you don't stay enough, you will not be qualified to be sent. Listen to me. The apostolic pattern is that we generate sending capacity, not sitting capacity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Several men of God are too interested in sitting capacity that there is no sending capacity. Yes, sir. The apostolic pattern is sending capacity. That's why they will come and sit on them. You will see men that are serving tables. You are not getting what I'm saying. The scripture said that when they were looking for people to serve table, they said, look for men of honest report. Stephen and Philip appeared and the scripture testified about them and said that these men are full of Holy Ghost and faith. That is the requirement to serve table. The requirement to be an usher is that you are a miracle worker. Because Philip left and went to Samaria and turned Samaria upside down. The usher in the church. What did they eat? I need to eat it. There is something they ate. Baby, 
baby food cannot make you a mature man. Huh? A day will come that baby food you used to admire and like, it can no more satisfy your soul. It will just be like appetizer. You'll be crying out for heavy and deep things in the spirit because your heart has become heavy. You have become pregnant with the burdens of God. The Holy Ghost sat on you and impregnated you. You came out of that place. You are no more normal. When you see some of us pray, somebody said he saw me in the spirit praying, and it seemed as if I sat on the globe, the earth like a, glo a globe, and I was groaning on the groaning on it. Why? That's how we came to Zambia. I did not come to Zambia just with anointing. No, we traveled, we crawled, and when we cry, our cry is Zambia, oh Zambia, Zambia, oh Zambia. Arise to your destiny, for your time has come. These are days that God has ordained and men that will participate, they will know how to labor, labor in prayer. The passage of years cannot raise men in your church. The only thing that can raise men is travail, is labor in prayer. Listen to me, woman of God. When you labor over your congregation in prayer, you will raise them apostles in three years. That's what Jesus did. If not, they can sit over you and be babies. You'll be telling them to the, you are telling them the same thing after five years. You you need to you need to sit over them. I labor over my congregation. I labor, 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 over you people think that discipleship is just in teaching and speaking words you don't know how depraved the human mind is the fall has dealt so treacherously with humans that the depravity is beyond your imagination it takes groaning and travail it takes labor in prayer to disciple record that he had great zeal for you who is you here Colossian church he had great zeal for you the next one he said and them that are in Laodicea and them that are in Heropolis <laughs> you don't know what this thing is saying he's saying that one man his name is Epaphras he's discipling three cities in prayer first one is Colossi second one is Laodicea Third one is Harapolis. Anytime, anytime this man enters prayer, he will say in Zambia, Lusaka, 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 
Lusaka, Lusaka, Lusaka. Bind my soul with this land. That's how I pray. Bind my soul. Bind my soul with the land. Bind my soul. As I grow and travel, let the land and territory receive ventilation as a result of my travel. When I labor, let my labor be channeled into the soul of the territory. I labor, I labor, I labor, I labor. That's how you labor over a city. When you do it for some years, God will give you authority over that city. That's how men gain authority in the spirit. It's not just gathering people. You gain authority over a people or over a city when you labor over them. Find a prayer partner too, too. We are going to labor over your ministry, over this city, over this nation, Zambia. Hold the hands of Pastor, hold, hold the hands of somebody. We are going to cry. One man received grace. Listen, do you know in another place in the scripture? Epaphras became sick. And Paul said that he cried to God for mercy to heal him because he would have broken his heart. Why? That is how much capacity that man has to labor. If you take away his ministry, the whole territory, the whole church will be in darkness. There are people like that. And that's what I want to bring you into. Some of you, your calling is to labor in prayer. The man of God can be preaching and anointing will be moving. He doesn't know that he's the intercessor at the back that is powering what is happening. But you know your ministry, you know your calling, you know your place. Pray for two minutes. Ask God, give me grace to labor. Give me grace to labor. What you get here is your own. You have seen your calling and you know you cannot achieve it without much more grace. Authority comes to men that labor. Authority comes to men that labor. Haide Bakasura, we are Padia Kapampera.
place to sit upon your people. In the place of prayer, in the place of fasting, in the place of the war, you need to seek. You need to prove. Oh my God. Like the eagle. Like the eagle. 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 It's time. Eagle. It's time. It's time. It's time to mount up. It's time to mount up. The scripture said, they that wait upon the Lord, they are like eagles. They mount up with wings like the eagles. We mount up. 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 Oh, 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 oh,
Come up to the front. Come and drop your offering. Drop your seed. Connect to the altar. Connect to the altar by our in all of us. Yeah. 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 Yeah.